This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to explain why crime still doesn't pay, but it actually costs the criminal, and why a runner or capper must pay restitution to the insurers he defrauded. The Eighth Circuit Court of Appeal was called upon to decide the amount of restitution owed by a participant in a recruitment and kickback scheme aimed at defrauding automobile insurance companies. The district court ordered restitution for every chiropractic patient that Abdisalan Hussein recruited from 2013 onward. In the USA versus Absalan Abdullahab Hussein, also known as Abdisalan A. Hussein, the United States Court of Appeal for the Eighth Circuit on August 23, 2023, resolved the dispute over restitution. Hussein ended up at a Twin Cities chiropractic clinic after an automobile accident. The visit resulted not in medical treatment, but in a job. The clinic hired him to recruit patients, and then another one did too. Hussein's role was to bring in as many accident victims as possible. Each new patient could undergo treatment up to $20,000, the limit of basic economic benefits available under most Minnesota automobile insurance policies. In return, Hussein received a kickback of up to $1,500, a portion of which he shared with patients who returned for multiple visits. The U.S. government started Operation Backcracker, targeting insurance fraud. If Hussein qualified as a runner under Minnesota law, the insurers had no obligation to reimburse the clinics for any, any services provided. After a jury trial, the district court ordered Hussein to pay restitution to the insurance companies he defrauded. He complained, alleging he was not a runner, because Minnesota statutory law was kind of different, the Eighth Circuit explained that not all recruiters are runners and restitution only applied to runners. On remand, the amount of restitution decreased. This time, the district court concluded that Hussein qualified as a runner for only 53 of the 65 victims, which dropped the award of restitution to $155,864. Hussein, for his part, has adopted an all-or-nothing strategy. He does not believe he owes a single penny in restitution. The Eighth Circuit disagreed. The linchpin of Hussein's argument was that he was never a runner. Once runners are involved, it taints the relationship and automatically relieves insurers of their duty to pay. In statutory terms, once a runner recruits someone, every health care service provided afterward becomes non-compensable and unenforceable as a matter of law. A runner is someone who directly procures or solicits prospective patients for pecuniary gain and knows or has reason to know that the provider's purpose is to obtain benefits under or relating to an automobile insurance contract. Hussein had an active role in recruiting accident victims. He also helped coach patients to deceive insurance companies, all in the effort to line his own pockets. The trial record completes the picture. Hussein received up to $1,500 per patient he recruited, which satisfies the pecuniary gain requirement. A series of text messages established the remaining elements, and one Hussein texted with a clinic owner about how one patient was a, quote, piece of shit, close quote, for not coming to enough appointments. The Eighth Circuit concluded 
that Hussein directly procured these patients with at least a reason to know, if not actual knowledge, that the provider's purpose was to obtain benefits under an automobile insurance contract. The problem for Hussein was that the government met its ultimate burden of proving the loss. In a fraud case, the government bears the burden of proving a prima facie case that each victim was entitled to restitution, and the defendant bears the burden of rebutting it. One patient who testified that she called him about chiropractors, even though she did not know him while he referred to another as a piece of shit, for ending her victims. Neither were friends, and it goes without saying that being a helpful person in the Somali community of Minnesota does not transform every interaction into one made in a social setting and therefore the judgment of the district court was affirmed. In my opinion, the crime of insurance fraud is destroying the ability of the insurance industry to serve the honest public and make a small profit. Runners, called cappers in other states, are the first level of many insurance fraud schemes. Hussein used his involvement in the Minnesota Somali community to allow unscrupulous medical providers to defraud insurers. The court applying the strange Minnesota statute required Hussein to make restitution to most of the insurers he defrauded and put a small dent in auto insurance fraud in Minnesota. One can only hope they also convicted the health care providers and made them pay restitution as well. Of course, if Hussein fails to pay the restitution, he'll have to serve as a condition of his probation time in jail. This video was adapted from my blog, Alma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog. If you found this video or the blog post to be of interest, please tell your friends in class colleagues about the blog and the videos and let them subscribe to the blog and videos as well. If you wish further detail on insurance, insurance law, insurance claims, and insurance fraud, you might find it useful for a very small fee to subscribe to Excellence in Claims Handling at Locals.com or to my Substack publications. Thank you for your attention.